Hey guys, this is Alexei for CG Tabs Plus. Today I will be telling you how to render animations. I've noticed this is a problem that a lot of beginning artists struggle with. You know, the basics. Uh, when you render animation in 2013, it should be high definition. It should be 16 to 9, which means either it's 1280 by 720 or it's 1920 by 1080. You might recognize these digits from resolutions of HDTVs. Now, if you want, you can obviously go to 1024 by 576, or even 8 if you're making a small file. It could be just 512 for previews. But keep this ratio. The ratio is 16 to 9. So if I put 16 here, the ratio uh, doesn't quite work. Uh, if I put 160, it'll be 90, 16 to 9. Don't render square animations. This is not the 1990s. We need to render uh, high definition 16 to 9 renders because that's what YouTube is, that's what your screen is, most likely, that's what most people's phones are. You know, this is the standard nowadays. Frame rate depends on your country. Some countries demand TV frame rate of 30, but if you change this to 25 frames per second from 30, you save yourself 5 frames for every second of animation. And generally, you can't tell the difference when you're watching it. Like, most people actually prefer 25 to 30. Even 24 is still acceptable. Most movies are in 24 frame rate. And you don't have to render 5 whole frames. So if you have a 2 second animation and each frame takes a minute, you save 10 minutes of render time. And you get the same result. It's pretty good. And obviously, if you expand this to animations which are more than two seconds, it's a pretty significant decrease in render time. Okay, so that's just basic. But this is not the reason I made the tutorial. This is an important thing for rendering animations, which I sometimes see. The important thing is when you save things. Do not save QuickTime movie files or AVI file. Just don't. You want to, There are three main formats that you want to use. Firstly, you want to render image sequences, because an image sequence renders out something that looks like this. You have one frame for one, one picture for one frame of the animation. And that means while you're rendering, it saves each frame to your hard drive, to a folder that you pick. And when it saves, uh, you can stop the render. And you can, for example, if you need to do something else with your computer. And you can come back and then start it from the frame you stopped on. So if you, or if your computer crashes, you don't lose everything, you just lose the current rendering frame and you still have all the previous renders. It's also useful, for example, in this animation. Let's go Shift F6 to open our picture viewer. And let's open this animation here. Yes, that's fine. Now, let's say I've rendered this, and then I realize that uh, I don't like his hat. If you render the movie file, you have to re-render the whole animation. You can't just go, okay, I want to re-render frames from 257 or from wherever it appears, so from 250 onwards. Uh, I mean, you can overlay an After Effects, but that's not very convenient. Here you can just, if you're watching it render, you're like, hey, I don't like that. You can stop it, and you can just start rendering, like, if, while you're rendering, like, you know, it's rendering, like, frame, 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 and you get to a part, you're like, whoa, that's not rendering well, or that's not the right color or, you know, it's jumping wrong, it's glitching. You can just stop the render, then you can go back to where it was fine, and then you can keep rendering from that moment on. You can fix it in your file and you can start the render. Here you can set output and you can just change the frame to 250. That's where I want to start from. So, you know, you, you give yourself a lot more flexibility. Now, there are three formats you want to save your renders on. They are PNG, TIFF, and JPEG. Now, they each have their own positive benefits. TIFF is generally is a favorite among most people who have you know, unlimited hard drive space and a lot of RAM. It makes very big files, they're uncompressed, and they open very quickly in After Effects. Uh, so they're generally good. Now, JPEGs are good because they're small and they open fast, but they do lose quality. So they're not the best option. Like some, in some projects, they're fine. Uh, they more than hold up. But if you want to keep your quality, I personally like PNGs. Even though sometimes they take a bit longer to open in After Effects, they don't scroll quite as smoothly. So it depends how much post work you're doing. But they're great because they're the smallest you can get. They're as much compressed as you can compress a file without losing any image quality. 
and you can save them in 8 and 16 bit, which is color space, which is way beyond the scope of this tutorial. So, when you render these animations, pick up one of these formats depending on what your priority is. Uh, once again, I prefer PNG, it's a good render. Once you've rendered these PNG sequences, you will have a folder full of files, which obviously isn't uploadable to YouTube. So after you've done that, you have to open your After Effects, or there are many programs that can do this, that compile image sequences into, into you know, movie files. You double click on your you know, project area, you pick your sequence. Now we can pick one of my older ones, which is uh, small. And then you just click and drag it onto this compositing file. Make sure that your frame rate is correct. Before you drag it on, go here and go interpret footage main and make sure it's 25 frames per second if that's what you animated with and rendered it in Cinema 4D. Once again, this is also important. In Cinema 4D, don't forget to check your not only your output here, frame rate 25, also in your project settings. If you press Control D, you will see here your project settings. Make sure this is set to 25 too. In Cinema 4D, there's a lot of these settings and they all, they're all needed. You can't have just one setting. So a lot of people complain why there's so many settings. The thing is, you sometimes need to have these settings separate. You want to have separate folders. So don't forget to set your project and your render settings to 25. And then inside After Effects, when you import this PNG sequence, don't forget to go interpret footage, main, and change it to 25. You can also, in your settings, you can set the default frame rate for imported footage. Then you click and drag it onto the compositing button, and you have a new composition. Let me zoom out here. You know, you have your all animation. And then you just export it like anything else. You go add to render cube, control shift, backslash. No, yes. It'll be in your render cube. Here, just pick your, you know, make it, if you have a template done or not, you know, pick format. Here, you can put H264 or uh, QuickTime, you know. This is just the regular encoding. Google this stuff. It's, you know, it's interesting stuff. Uh, mostly I set my, my settings are quite simple. I select QuickTime, just in case you need it. Uh, format options, I pick H.264. Basic quality, you can drag it up to 190. You know, just experiment, see what kind of file size and quality you get. But this is generally, I think this is the best option that you get. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's how you render a file out of Cinema 4D. And this will let you avoid a lot of problems. Also, uh, when you render these image sequences, don't forget you have these things called object buffers, which are also super useful. Because now that you have image sequences, like I've rendered out an object buffer of an After Effects. And let's open, where is the object buffer? There it is. Let's double click on this one. Now, if I overlay it on top of here, it's all black, but you see, this is an object buffer for the letters we wish you. So what does this mean? Well, it means that I can now change this stuff without affecting anything else in the scene. So, for example, if I uh, make an adjustment, if I, let's hide this for a second. Let's go layer, new layer, adjustment layer. And let's add a in effects, let's add a hue saturation once it loads. There you go. Hue saturation. Now let's scroll back to our we wish you. And let's change the mass of saturation and maybe change the hue. No, no, here, hue. There you go. Now the problem is everything else changes color as well. So what we do is we move this layer above that one, and we go here track map. You can toggle these switches to see the track map panel. And on the adjustment layer, you select Luma Map of Previs. And now, as you see, it only affects the letters. Now I go back to adjustment layer, and we can keep adjusting, and it leaves the rest of the composition intact. So it's a very good way to quickly adjust your renders if you don't like something, you know, color-wise. Also, if something is not, you know, if there's not bright enough and not enough contrast, you can obviously apply any kind of effects here and just adjust that small piece of your render. In Cinema 4D, you set up these object buffers by just adding a multi-pass. You right-click and you go object buffer. 
and you select what number you want it to be. And in the C4D file, you apply a compositing tag uh, by, for example, here on the end text, you right click, Cinema 4D tags, and here you'll see compositing. It might be it's off screen, so you can't see it, but it's there, it's compositing tag. It'll look like this. And then you go here, you go object buffer, and you tick one or two if you already have one. And this way, with object buffers, you can adjust things in After Effects after you finish rendering them. And so for this, you know, you need image sequences. You don't get in your save file to copy and paste the same parts for your multipass as your render image. There's lots of other stuff you can do in multipass, but that's all, you know, it's a different subject matter. Maybe I'll cover it in another tutorial if there is interest. But yeah, so there you go. That's how you render. Remember, you can TIFF, PNG, and JPEG, depending on what you use. There's also a format called EXR, but EXR, it's here, you can see it. Uh, it's more complicated. If you get into serious compositing, then you can start using EXR files, which seems to be missing from the list here for some reason. Uh, open EXR, there is, yeah. They combine a lot of different files, like they combine you know, your object buffers and all your specular maps into one file, but I don't like that. I prefer everything to be separate PNGs or TIFFs because they're easy to deal with. You can see everything you have and, you know, it's more intuitive to me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial. Uh, have fun rendering.